Hello, Sarah here from Project Shiro Studios. Welcome back to AU Redesign Challenge, where my patrons vote on a pop culture character and I randomly redesign them into an alternate universe version of themselves. B we made it to episode 10! Thanks so much to everyone for sticking with me. I hope you're still enjoying these because I love doing them. If you have any notes or feedback, please leave them in the comments. Um, and if you're enjoying this video, please leave me a like! It was back to convention this month with a single winner among the votes. Erska, the bear bully from my webcomic, The Uncontrollable Red Class. Let's see what genre she gets. While I pick dice, here's a reminder on how this works. There are 40 genres to pick from. I'm going to choose a d6 for the 10's place and a d10 for the 1's place. A roll of 1 to 4 on the d6 will be 10 to 40 as normal. A 5 means a 0 and a 6 is a reroll. I picked this reddish-brown D10 for Urska's fur, and the D6 is part of my Dragonborn Barbarian set, so I thought it was appropriate too. Alright, let's roll. Oh, what's it gonna be? Zoom in. 35. What's a 35? Zoom over to my spreadsheet. And... Ooh, Tron. Okay, let's go. So I tried to go for an original Tron look over the new one. Not that the new one is not slick and cool. But um, uh, there's just a charm that the 80s designs had. You know, it's like spandex suits and a bunch of sports padding just all slapped together. <laughs> I think it's fun. And I recently found out how they did all the glowy line effects on the suits and it's actually pretty amazing. So there's this technique that had been used in animation for a while called backlighting. Basically the animators literally uh, film something and then recreate the exact frame but with like a mask uh, cut out of it and then they will shine a light through the mask and then composite those two frames together and uh, they had to do that for every single frame in the movie. <laughs> Everything that was in the computer at least. So um, yeah, there's a reason that they didn't do a second one until uh, computer effects had caught up uh, and that reason is because it's really hard and really time consuming. But I mean the effect was great. So, uh, anyway, here I am trying to figure out, like, how much armor to give her. Uh, I went with kind of a, a sporty uh, discus effect. I, gosh, I don't remember what they call the disc game in the movie. <laughs> oh, can you tell I haven't watched this in a long time? In the end, I decided, um not to worry too much about all the little patterns right away because I knew I wanted them to be glowy which means they would not be on the ink slayer anyway so um, I am mainly focused on the big shapes uh, and then moved on to the effects later I definitely kept a V motif because as a sun bear, um, that is uh, Urska's body markings. It's a giant V shape on her chest. And the kind of V shaped eyebrows as well. Oh my gosh, how good is this music, right? Oh. Shout out to filmmusic.io for this great music. Just perfect. If you need free music for your videos, <laughs> that's, that's where you go. Uh. draw her with a fang sticking out, but I thought it was appropriate here. Because she's feeling a bit more powerful than usual. And 
And now I will get to the bulk of the Chloe lines. Oh, so I didn't learn this until after I flatted the piece, but um, all of the scenes uh, in the computer world were filmed in black and white. Um, I guess so the uh, glowy lines would pop out more? I don't know. Um, but I decided to tint her just a little bit on the warmer side because her usual colors are like brown and red. So instead of just a straight gray, I kind of did this diluted yellow color. I try never to use straight black and white when I can because I just, they're boring, you know? And um, it doesn't give you any kind of space to play with the colors and to give them any kind of meaning. So uh, I, will, I will tint shades of white and black different colors whenever possible. And I really only use white in the... Um, the eye shines area and I only use black basically for inks or um, any spot blacks that I might want to do. Not many spot blacks in this design though. Everything needs to be Chloe and futuristic. You can see there on the screen a little note that I left to myself. <laughs> that I forgot to erase until just now. It's interesting, on the sides of the arms of the reference picture, there are these little blobs that kind of look like writing. I wonder what's written on those. Is it like a badge that tells you what kind of program they are? That's really interesting lore. All right, time for the 80s background. This was really simple and also really satisfying. Of course, CSP's perspective tools make the grid very easy to make. Add some more glowy. Just the proportions of things. kind of erase stuff as it goes toward the background so it's not too flashy. And now here comes all of the extra stuff. And yes, the glowy lines are messed up and yes, I will fix them in a minute. <laughs> I haven't quite caught it yet. There we go. CSP is a little bit picky on how to rearrange things. edge lighting here. And that's just about it. I tweaked this just a tiny little bit off camera. Um, I wasn't super satisfied with the extra lettering there, but uh, as you can see I made it a bit more computery to fit the theme. And Oh, I really like how this Urshka turned out. I hope you like it too. If you did enjoy this, please leave a like. And if you want to see more, subscribe for my next video. If you would like to get a vote on which character I design next, why not join my patrons, whose names are on screen right now. Go to patreon.projectshirostudios to sign up at any level to get a vote. And that's just about it. So, have a great day. Great night, great whatever. See you next time.